Welcome to Retro Bassin. We are at the National Fish and Lure Collectors Club, standing next to Russell Kerr, who has the best in show display. And as you can tell behind me, it's all about the Fred C. Young Big O. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Alright, so we're walking down the first aisle here. Uh, Mark is taking me to meet Russell. Uh, we're gonna try to get sidetracked. It's like way too easy here. <laughs> like kids and candy. We need to like put the blinders on for us or something. I gotta tell you. Oh my, honestly, I can't look down. You just can't look down. You gotta look up, otherwise you're gonna stop. No, these are all for sale. These are all. <gasps> Ooh, look at those. Wait, that's a lot of big oats for sale. So what are the Mike East updates? Well, Mike, Mike was trained by Fred, okay? So Mike was an engineer at, yeah, he apprenticed under Fred Young. He was an engineer at uh, the plant, K25, Y12. And so he put all the rattles in for Fred. And then, so Mike started making his own baits his own design. He's got some that's like the Big O, that we call. Then he designed his own bill, and he made a duplicator, so he just kept making them, making them, making them, making them. So how did you get into Fred Young Baits? Because you have, I mean, this is wild. And then, if that's your collection over that's there. My that's my collection, yeah. Whew. What got me started was, there was a pastor that I helped. He had some issues with some runoff problems on a, on a uh, development that was across the street and he was moving and he was having a yard sale the, the, in two weeks or something because they were trying to gather everything up and I, he pulls me in his garage where the mud had come in and everything and I said well okay this is pe who you need to call this is what needs to happen uh, so we were talking and everything he said well I'm getting rid of all this stuff and I said well I, I like old tackle he said well I've only got one little plastic tackle box over here and he said, you're welcome to look at it. And he said, I've only been fishing one time in my life. And I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, it was one of our members at the church that, that visited. And I said, who was that? And he said, Fred Young. I opened that box up, and it was three Fred Young baits. And I said, you know, those are expensive, because I was collecting Tennessee shad and really wasn't buying a lot of Fred Young baits because they were expensive. Back then, they were 550 if you could buy one. And he said, well, Lord, you've helped me. I'm going to give these to you. And I said, you're giving away a lot of money. And he said, no, you've helped me. And that's how I got started. And ever since then, it's been... Uh, it was on. Is addiction the right word? Addiction. <laughs> it's an addiction. It's a crazy addiction. James Lovingood and Fred Young all carved together originally. So <clears throat> then Fred finally hit on the big O. Then there was some jealousy there. So then they were mad at each other, from what I understand. And so Fred's got really, really popular. So then something happened between Boot Anderson and James Lovingood. Then they split ways. Uh, he, they sold the patent to uh, Da Top Secret. That was after they sold. To I was going to say, because that looks like a top secret to me. Yeah to Lonnie Warwick and Roy Winston. And this is the, these you can tell are factory made and they were done all duplicated. So your early, your early Tennessee shad were hand carved, balsa wood. They've got a wire that goes all the way around them, ties, and then they fill it back in. Uh, so the two dots, when you see the two dots, Gilmark, dot in front, dot in the rear, that's a Boot Anderson Bay. When you see these with the dot at the bottom, that's a Lonnie Warwick, Roy Winston Bay. 
Now this is an early creek minnow that we would call, and that's a Boot Anderson. And that was a creek minnow. And I've got a big collection of Tennessee shad at home. Uh, these are just some duplicates that, that I have, I've had. And then uh, other Tennessee known would be the Cinco, which is Jerry Young. Jerry was Fred Young's nephew. Uh, his brother's son. So Jerry did a few baits. Not a lot, but he was known for the Cinco, and that's what these are, it's called the Cinco. Did it sink? It's got, it's weighted, he just called them Cinco. So I've never fished it. Uh, then I collect, uh, I've got a pretty decent collection of Lovin' Good. You do not see a lot of Lovin' Good. Where it is? I don't have them here. Okay. Uh, the Lovin' Good, he used steel wire instead of the stainless wire. So you would find a lot of those with no hooks because you fished them, they'd rust, hooks fall off. So that was his flaw in his design. But he had some beautiful colors. Um, then Mike Bowers, uh, Mike Bowers is from Tennessee. Um, I have a decent collection of Mike Bowers. Uh, but he had duplicators also. Uh, my, my favorite is the tennis, is, is Fred Young. And the reason why is because it revolutionized crankbaits. We wouldn't be where we're at without Fred because everybody copied Fred's stuff. So how did Fred come up with the design? Because it was pretty unique at the time, right? I yeah. mean, it's a big old bait. He kept carving until, until he found out what would work. He was laid up in a full body cast and was carving an Otis would come by, gather a few lures, take them out, cast them in the morning before he went to work. And when he hit it, he came back and said, Fred, this is it. This is the one. Keep making it. And they started making it. And so he named it, that's, that's the reason he named it Big O. Big Otis. Otis was a big man. So that's the reason he named it that. And so. What determines the value of the different baits? I noticed some are on the low end, 200, which is pretty Condition. low. Condition. Okay. Condition's everything. I, I grade, I, I'm strict on grading. So condition, color, sign, number, uh, B plus O, B minus O. Your B plus O, B minus O's are early. That's your earliest baits when they're hand signed bills. Uh, I just sold one. Let's see if I have any more here. What the about one? what about a number two, Mark? That number two I got from Salt and Michael Bacon. Yeah. Would that be a good one? That's a good one. I've got two number ones up there in that case. Yeah, number two would be a good one. Yeah, but but the real early stuff is your PNI and, and the stuff marked B plus and B minus O. That's the ones that really put it on the map. That that bait there is an early bait. Um, these baits here, early baits, early baits. These are prototypes that he tried. That he and is tried that where he was just experimenting with sizes because they look very, yes. yeah. So what's that one? So that's that early. Came, those two are early baits. These are early baits. That's a pin eye. That's a that's a that's a pin eye. And the way he did the pin eyes is back in the day when you take your when you took your shirts, his wife would take take his clothes to dry cleaners. You get them back, and you got those little pins with little heads on. Them. That's what those eyes are. His heads. He used everything that he could find. The circuit board. You know, he got circuit board obviously from Oak Ridge. So was back he the then, first one to use circuit board in the Yes, list? first one. And what was what's, plastic, so good, what's so good about a circuit board? List? You cannot they break it. Today? You cannot break it. I've not seen the plastic. The plastic lips, you can break them, you can chip them, you can. Uh, sometimes they would react to the target oil that you dipped them in. Uh, Boot Anderson had some problems. They got bad plastic, and that's what that's what put them out of business at one time, was because all the lips would swell. And it was 
the bad plastic when it, it was a reaction with the targanol and then the heat and cold temperatures would change it. So it, it you cannot, this bait's been fished heavy, very, very heavy. Which one there? This one here. If you look at the lid. It's chipped. But it's not head. damaged. Okay. So the lacquer is chipped off of it. Yeah, the targanol that he dipped them in. You can take that bait and re-dip re that lip and it'd be strong as again. It's still strong. And that's the reason people say, oh, he put white, that's a white bill, that's a white. He got all whatever color they would have, but what turned them yellow was the target on. And that's why all of his baits sort of do have a, a yellowish tinge to them. Yeah. It's, it's almost part of the color palette yes, of, it of is. the big o. Yeah. Yeah. What about the big gold flakes? That's kind of a unique deal as well. Yeah, I mean, he just puts... Just a couple, sometimes just a couple of flakes. Yeah, just a few flakes, whatever. He painted all his own paints. I mean, who knows what was going through his mind. Some guys would call in, I want some small ones, I want some thin ones. When you look at the collection up here at the front, you're gonna see stuff you've never seen. But like, there's one up there that's made to his wife, Charlene. There's one that says love on it, you know. He, Fred loved the spotlight. And he was more about the fishing and the spotlight about, he didn't care about money. He wasn't trying to get rich doing this. He did it for the love of the fishing and people. He, li he likes people. These signs came from the family auction when they auctioned down in uh, Atlanta, Georgia at Don's auction. These were displays that they actually uh, pulled a drawing out for people that were there and they got these things. And there was only two of them made. So one was in Darwin Stewart's collection. That's that one over there that's signed by Glenna, which is Fred's daughter. And then this one with my good friend Joe Dameron. Uh, I got it from him. And, and just been very fortunate with good people helping me build my collection. These were made by Otis Young. Um, documentation's here. That was his attempt to make a, a fishing lure. This is Otis's son, Jerry Young. And this, Jerry's in front of a collection that I had bought from Mike Johnson. So that's that's Jerry's picture there. So this is his Cinco's and then some odd baits. His, uh, little ones, his topwater baits. And then you go over here and you got, these are Mr. Fred's. All through there. And then you get into the flat-sided Fred Young baits. And then you get into some of the rare scoop backs. Uh, scoop backs and plastic bill models down here. And they're numbered. Some of these are oh lures. Now that's a plastic bait that's been repainted by Fred. Uh, and then these are marked FCY on the bill. So that was just a different time that he marked. He just changed up his markings. And then as we move on down, you've got, this is part of Darwin Stewart's collection that I had purchased. Um, early, early pen out that signed. And these, they have the numbers on them, came out of the family family's collection, Fred's personal stuff. And you can see the early, early pin eye baits that are here. And then you've got an article from the original newspaper for Fred Young uh, talking about his passing. And then an actual piece from the funeral home when you go in, it's the folded pamphlet that they would give you. Uh, another article here about Fred's passing. Um, you got 1977, 1976, and they're signed on the other side, Fred Young. And then this one's Love for Charlene, and it's just Charlene signed to his wife. Uh, and then a yellow, barred yellow, that's that's tough, tough, tough color. Uh, and then that's great signature a little bit different color, and then a white sign for it. And then these are the display baits. People would call them saltwater baits, they're not. There's only 
13 or 14 of these known to exist, and there's three here. This is number 12, 11, and 9. What were these used for? Well, display. He gave them to people that he liked. He gave them to some of the stores. There was two that hung over Stardust Boat Dock entrance for years. I looked at those. Uh, a guy that had them, I would, I wouldn't buy them because they had screws through the back of them. Uh, I, I like condition is everything to me, but they're super super rare. A good friend of mine owns them now. He he loves them. So. Uh, then you got some really tough colors up here uh, out of Darwin's collection. Um, so even some of the different sizes. I tried to leave Darwin's collection, uh, took a lot of it and put it together uh, because Darwin, Darwin and I were good friends. So uh, then you get into the stamp lips. That's a number zero one. That's number one right there. Uh, and then we'll get back into, I think there's another number one over here that's in white. Um, then you get into, I, I like the red colors and the oranges. Of course, I'm Tennessee, so I like orange. Um, then you've got just a wood body that's been dipped in Targano, and that came from the family's collection. Uh, more of different colors of the Bard series. Uh, tough to find those. Uh, you got that one I actually bought directly from the auction. Uh, paid good money for that one. But you can look it up. You can look that number up on live auctioneers on the family auction. You'll see what I paid for it. Uh, you go on down and get into this one is B plus and B minus O's. Uh, all these are B, mi B minus and these are B plus, and that's how they're stamped. Uh, those are handwritten lips. They're not stamped lips, they're handwritten. So all these are handwritten, B plus, B minus. And then the turkey foot design, and this is an original photograph with Fred, and I'm not sure who the other gentleman is. Uh, but two of these baits came from, from that person. Uh, then you get into the topwaters. Um, didn't do a whole lot of topwaters. So, but he was experimenting with different things, trying to see what would work, what wouldn't work. So, then you go to the early pin eye. All these baits are pin eye, every one of them. Uh, so, it, uh, I love the green, the dark green. Uh, this is, that's the lure that got this started for me. That's one of the lures that got this started that was given to me from the pe uh, preacher. That's so old, it doesn't even look like a Fred Young. I mean, at least no, to me. but it's early. It's real early. And then this is an article that was in the Blunt County uh, Daily Times magazine uh, in Maryville, Tennessee, when they had the auction uh, for the family, family sale. They, they ran an article about the sale. And this is actually the newspaper cutout of it. So we're going down, minnow type or jerk baits type is all here. We've got a, a good variety of different sizes. Um, it's probably the most you'll see in one place of those for sure. Uh, then down here you got, these are hand sign bills. This one's marked test. So this was a test bait. Uh, that's an early test bait. Uh, then you got a deep diver. Now those are super, super rare. You don't ever see that long bill. And it's, it's a hand sign lip. And um, so, and it's written big dash O. In, in Mark. This one here and this one here was returned to Mike Cordell. That is what was sent to make the Cordell crawdad. So I got those back. That's what they used to make the crawdad. That was the pattern. And then this is his crawdads and then you got the mice. The mice are double with the round fat body without the deep, deep diving lid. I call these mice. That's that's a mouse. Um, so then these are swooped back also here. Um, this one's really cool. It's it's got a a penny for the bill. Um, don't know what date is. I think it's covered up, but it's 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 actual penny. Uh, 
maybe a wheat penny, I don't know. But. Then you've got the real small ones. These little bitty ones that are all marked Big O. Not, not, not Mr. Fred, they're more of the size of a Big O. And then we go on over here, and this is an original egg carton. He sent to Larry Cribb uh, with baits in it. And these baits are actually in this collection. Uh, it was not, was not these baits that, were, that was in there. And then this is a signed book that a friend of mine had that Fred signed for him. Uh, Alan Brown, uh, a good friend. I was able to buy a lot of his collection too. Uh, then you get the big mows. Uh, these are all big mows here and here. That's a rattler. That's a rattler. Really tough to find in those. <laughs> these are double signed, and and when I say double signed, um, they're signed on both sides if they're double signed. And that means it'll say, I think this one's Otis and Fred, opposite side. And then these are the necklaces. If you look at those, that's a good color. And you won't, you won't find these anywhere. Uh, as you get over here, these are what I call as prototypes. A uh, lot of different just oddities as he went down. I call these the Pac-Mans. Because they look like a Pac-Man. Uh, from what I understand, he, he, he would call them pumpkin seeds. But it looked like a Pac-Man to me, so I call them Pac-Man. So, uh, even something like this, you throw it in there and hope you hit them in the head with it. Uh, but he was trying anything, you know, he'd just make it, it, it come to his mind and he'd just make something different. Um, just like this, with that really long deep diving bill, and it has no weight in it, so I don't know how it would even go down. It wouldn't. Um, this is the other bait that was given to me by the preacher that was a prototype. So It's like a pogo shed. Yeah. And then this one, um, this one came out of Fred's personal stuff when they went to pick up everything for the auction. Gibby Gibson. Uh, vice president of our region, or the president of our vice president of our region, um, helped uh, help Glenna, Fred's daughter, and uh, he ended up with this bait, and then I got it from I got it from him. So it's it's in perfect place. So I'll let you look through. What is your favorite bait? In you got every one, but what's your favorite bait in the collection? Every one of them. I don't put any above the other. But there's a few that I wouldn't sell ever. And because it was given. That one and the other first one, and I don't know where the other one was. Yeah. It's just a regular Fred Young bait. It's just standard. Wow. But I love them all. Uh, it's, it's good that People need to be able to see this and know what Fred did for the crankbait. Once it, once he got it tuned in, it's what changed crankbaits forever. And this is it. This is and that's the man in the boat right there, sitting there looking at us. And uh, he loved it. He loved to he loved it to make a bait and and watch somebody's face when they caught a fish with it. So, I never got to meet him, wish I had. So. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.